tomorrow evening in that two o'clock service. You don't want to miss that, so call everybody you can. Try to get them here tonight or, or tomorrow night or tomorrow morning in the service. Now, I thank the Lord. He's been good to me. I appreciate every time I get to come here. I was here back in September in revival meeting, and uh, God's been good. Don't deserve his blessings. We don't deserve his blessings. I'm going to look at uh, the book of Amos, chapter number four, and verse number six. And I have also given you cleanness of teeth. You know what that, you know what that means? I don't mean God brushes your teeth. It means you ain't got no food. When he says that in the Old Testament, it's like a famine. God brought a famine to try to get people to wake up. I'll give you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in your places. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Also I've withholding the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon the other piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wanted one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have you not returned to me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and milled you when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. The palm worm devoured them. Yet have you not returned to me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you pestilence after the manner of Egypt, your young men have I slain with a sword and taken away your horses, and I have made the stink of your camps to come up into your nostrils. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I will do this to thee. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. God told these people, he said, uh, look, I sent rain, you wouldn't get right. I've let the young men die, you wouldn't get right. I've sent pestilence and sickness and diseases, you wouldn't get right. I blessed you with all kind of good stuff, you still wouldn't get right. What am I going to do with you? What's he going to have to do? to get you to get right with God. I'm preaching tonight on the subject, what will it take to bring you to God? God done everything world, these people, and they still wouldn't get right. I know people like that. I know people have been in fights, out of fights, in jail, out of jail, yeah. in court, out, out arrested, probation, child support, and everything, else, and still won't get right with God. I mean, God done everything but kill them, and they still will not get right with God. Since this is a youth rally, I'm going to tell you some Bible stories of this truth tonight, and I'm going to preach on, uh, to, the, to the kids, on a kid, so a kid can understand it. A preacher taught me a long time ago, he said, keep your preaching down on about a level of a seven or an eight-year-old, and that way most of the adults in the congregation will get it. Most, of the, most seminary graduates are only prepared to preach to seminary graduates. And I don't know if we have many in here tonight. Uh, but so tonight, I want to tell you some stories in the Bible about what God did to get people to get right. He said, I sent a famine, you wouldn't get right. I let, it, I let the rain dry, and it, you wouldn't get right. I let you have a car wreck and you wouldn't get right. I, I let you have, you got in trouble and you wouldn't get right. You lost your job and you wouldn't get right. You got arrested and you wouldn't get right. What in the world is he going to have to do to get you to get right with God? I want to tell you a few stories about this tonight. Number one, it took an earthquake for the Philippian jailer to get right. It sure did. You know that story in Acts chapter number 16. Paul and Silas were out 
preaching the word of God. And they were going to that one city to another city to another. Man, they had a move of God. And this old, old woman that followed them around was demon possessed. And they, they got the demons cast out of her. She got uh, delivered and got right with God. And they thought everybody would be happy. Lord, we've had the office revival. Ever was. I mean, the woman's demon possessed. And God said, but it didn't go too good for them. Uh, they drug them out of there and said, look, we made a lot of money off this old hoe. And we're going to take you out of here. And we're going to and we're going to beat you guys. And they beat them and put stripes on their back and put them in prison. Yeah. I like that for a great revival meeting. I mean, Paul and Silas was out there and they didn't, uh, they, they get in there, so Paul and Silas gets arrested. Take them like that, put their hands in stocks, let them in here, yeah. and the Bible said they put them in prison, not just in prison, but in Acts 16 it said inner prison. Yeah. That was the worst part. So you go into prison, it's out like this. You know, like Sing Sing, you know, or out yonder, uh, uh, out yonder, somewhere like that. And then we go down in there to the inner prison. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something, people. Prison back then wasn't like prison is nowadays. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have pool tables and weight rooms and HBO and air conditioning and three good meals a day. But he had rats and, and, and roaches and spiders and a piece of bread every day. That's about it. So uh, that was the their love offering for that revival that they got in that city. Yeah. And Paul and Silas went in there and they took them in there and they checked them in. And there's the old boy working there at the desk there. And they're saying, we got two guys here, we're gonna check them in. What are they doing? Out there street preaching. And uh, uh, they said, well, what in the world? You wanna do something stupid like that? And they said, because every preacher in the Bible is a street preacher, including Jesus. Yeah. And they said, well, well, my preacher never had, well, yeah, I'm sorry if you're a preacher. Every preacher yeah. in the Bible was a street preacher, yeah. including Jesus. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Right, they didn't have churches. And, uh, and they went in there and they, he said, all right, check them in. What's your name? Paul. What's your name? Silas. I tell them, put them back yonder in that, uh, put them back there in number seven. And they wrote, took him down through there. And that old boy sat back there and he'd be in. Uh, he's uh, messing with his phone. And uh, then they locked him up and they put him in chain. And they, and they went in there and they sat down like that. They had stripes on their back. I mean, no fancy no motel. Listen, I know these preachers nowadays are the biggest bunch of little sissified wusses I've seen them out. They think, I, I've heard them say, well, I went all the way down there and preached. They didn't hardly give me nothing. Well, look what these guys got. They got their back bloodied up and put in jail. Well, listen, all you preachers in the young guys learning, we ain't celebrities. We are, well, they ain't supposed to roll out the red carpet. We're just sinners saved by grace just like everybody else. Amen. They didn't get in a five-star mode. You know what I've heard preachers say? I've been in a lot of preachers' meetings. I've been doing this a long time. And I've heard them say, I went down there. Now, you've seen that old place they stuck me in. You know what I said? I said, you, you probably didn't deserve that, you little brat. Man, it, ain't, it ain't gonna kill you, brother. You can sleep in your car. You'll be all right. That's better than sitting in jail with your hands and legs tied behind you. That's what Paul got. Paul didn't get no love offering. Paul didn't get no praise of man. They threw him in jail. So they're sitting there that night and, and looked down. When Paul looked at Silas and Silas looked at Paul and he just said, uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. This is my last revival trip I'll ever go on. Uh, big deal. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. They looked at him and Paul said, he has been good. He has been good. And Silas said, he sure has, Paul. And Paul said, Silas, I feel the spell coming on. Blood running down his back. No guitar, no amplifier, no microphone, no drums, no platform. Just, he has been good. Well, about 11 o'clock, that old boy got off work. And the third shift man came in. And I just, that man went home off work. Third shift man came in and say, how you doing, bud? Pretty good. How you, Bill? He said, uh, he said, anything going on tonight? Nah, nothing special. These two weirdos we got down there in number seven. Uh, you don't have to worry about them. I, I believe they'll be all right. And he said, all right, take it easy, bud. See you tomorrow night. So he sits down there and he starts uh, putting up these cards like this, playing solitaire. And he's laying down there like that, like that. He said, I don't, I don't know if I'd... I don't know if I'd let them guys see them if I was you. They, they said their mama wouldn't even allow them in the house. And he said, I don't care what they think. And so he put his cards out there like that, you know, and he's playing solitaire. And about that time, Paul looked over at Silas, and he said, Silas, God's been good to us. 
God been good to us? He said, hey, everybody in here saved? And the jailer said, shut up. I don't want to hear one more word out of you and you ain't getting no breakfast. One more word out of you and you ain't getting nothing. Now you have to know Greek like I do to get all these nuggets that, I, that I'm bringing out and I'm going to bring out a lot more. But for you uneducated hillbillies, uh, they, they, they brought him some bread. Said he wasn't getting nothing to eat. And he said, you ain't getting nothing to eat tomorrow now. And so you just hush your mouth right there. Well, about that time, Paul started getting a blessing. And boy, it started down in his toes. And you know, like the old people used to say, they started coming up his feet, up his knees, up that. And he said, Silas, I'm telling you what, I was on the road to Damascus and God saved me. You know what, Paul? It's a blessing to be able to suffer shame for his name and be the fellowship of his suffering. About that time, God up in heaven started getting a blessing. And the Lord said, mm-hmm. oh, if y'all don't hush, and Paul, hey, we love you, Lord. And the Lord said, mm-hmm. and Paul said, we love you, Jesus. And Jesus said, ah! Oh! And buddy, when he did, that thing started shaking. I mean, you know what they said? They said, they, they sung a jailhouse rock before Elvis got off his baby formula, brother. I'm telling you what, and the jailhouse began to shake and up and down, they had about a 9.0 on the Richter scale and the doors flew open and everything, everybody thought, good Lord, what in the world's going on? Got his attention. Old Bill went out there and he said, oh my goodness, they're all going to escape and I'm going to get killed. And he took out his sword and get ready to to commit suicide. And Paul said, kill man, everybody's going to be all right. Come in here. Bible said he ran in there and sprang down before them and called for a light. Call for a light. He said, somebody turn the lights on. All the powers went off. Somebody put a little, little had a, one of them still smoked. He wasn't right with God yet. Uh, he got a little big lighter. And boy, they got down there and he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he got right with God and his house. It took an earthquake to bring that old boy to God. Is that what it's going to take for some of y'all? God going to shake your world up? God, he can do it. He can do it. Can God, God might have to shake your brains out, buddy. I told somebody the other day, uh, they said, God's really dull when Brother Danny, I'm out of church. And I said, he can talk louder. He can talk a whole lot louder. It took an earthquake for that old boy to come to God. Paul looked down and said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Right then, brother, the boy got in. Tell you another story. It took a fish ride for Jonah to get right. What's it going to take for you? It took a fish ride. I'm telling the story so, so Frankie and Jackson here can get them. That way you old people can get it. It took a fish ride. You see, Jonah was a preacher. Claimed he was. He is saved, independent, fundamental, premillennial, blessed God, dressed right, act right, talk white, spit white. I mean, he done everything right. I mean, he is so sanctified and separated. I mean, I mean, he was more right with God than anybody. And he went down the road like that, cut his Bible like that so everybody could see him when he walked in the preacher's meeting. And he walked in like this, you know. You know how they do. And old Jonah, boy, he was like that. And one day the Lord looked down and said, Jonah! He said, yes, sir, hallelujah, glory to God. Woo, what you need, Lord? He said, I need you to go preach a revival. He said, amen. I've been praying you'd open doors. Glory to God, Lord. That's right. Where are we going? You just tell me. What time? Are we? Oh, I can see it now. I'll go to the steakhouse one night. I'll go to the uh, uh, garlic garden the next night. I'll, I'll go to I'll go to Red Lobster the next night. I'll go and I'll, I'll go and they'll take me. I'll see a five star motel. And the Lord said, Nineveh. He said, uh, I thought he was going to say First Baptist of Jerusalem. <laughs> Lord said, No, Nineveh. He said, I don't want to go to Nineveh. He said, I thought you was ready to go independent Baptist shouting, open where God to open the door and all that kind of stuff. Right. You're one of them that's called to Hawaii, I guess. Yeah. Well, the world's going to hell and you're called to the Miami Beach or something. Yeah, yeah we've heard that stuff before. Yeah, and, and, and Jonah said, but Lord, Lord, I don't want to go to Nineveh. He said, well, that's where you're going. Now, you're going to go or not? And you know what the Bible said? Nineveh's that way. Jonah went, like this right here. Big mistake right there. Listen, when God says go one way and you go the other way, you make a big mistake, bud. 
You're making a big mistake. Is this easy enough for y'all to understand? Oh, yeah. Listen, people. God said go one way. He said, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. So uh, the Lord said, all right, I ain't going to make you. I ain't going to make it. And John went down there, and the Bible said he went down from Jerusalem. I went on down to Joppa, and then he went down to the ship, and then he paid a fire. Uh, you know, what? you ever read that scripture? Jonah 1, Jonah running from God. Jonah 2, Jonah running to God. Jonah 3, Jonah running with God. Jonah 4, Jonah running ahead of God. There's your outline of uh, the book of Jonah. And uh, he said, uh, he went down there, and he said, uh, uh, I, I, I know what I'll do. I'll just take a cruise. I'm going on a cruise. I heard there's a bunch of them going. And it's Christian. I mean, there's singing groups on there. And on. Everything. I ain't going to go there. The old Ninevites where they're nasty, living in them old trailer parks and apartments. And them people ain't got no good night. There ain't no hope for them. No, They're all on meth. Every one of them, ain't no, ain't no hope for nothing. None of them down there. I ain't going to mess with them. I'll take me a cruise. So he went down there, paid, paid a whole bunch of money, and got on that boat. The Bible said he went down. Went down from Joppa. Went down, to the, went down to the ship, went down in the ship, went down in the sides of the ship, laid down, went to sleep. There ain't but one way to go when you run from God. Down. You may think that job is going to pay you a lot of money. You may think that old skank at work will make you happy. You may think that old handsome guy is going to give you everything in the world. But I'm going to tell you, you do something wrong. You run from God. There ain't but one way for you to go, bud. That's down. You going down, you hear me? You going down. And so Jonah went down and he went to sleep. He run from God. And the Lord says, all right, I ain't through with you yet. So there's out there that day, about the time the Lord, he holler amen because an earthquake, he goes, Phew. and when he does, winds start blowing, big old waves start coming up, about five times big as this uh, ceiling right here, and the waves go like that, and that boat starts going like this, and then it starts going like this, and the rain's hitting them in the face, and everybody gets scared, and they say, oh, Lord, everybody call on their gods. We're all going to die. We're done, boys. We're done. Yeah. About that time, somebody said, who's that fellow laying over there? Who in the world is that laying over there sound asleep? And they went over and came and said, God, man, call on your gods. We're all about to drown. Yeah. You don't look that like that right there. We're dying, you nut. Get up here and help us. And they go, who are you anyway? Yeah, I'm Jonah. What's, what's your occupation? I'm a preacher. <laughs> a preacher? What are you doing on this boat? Get out, why ain't you up here preaching, man? Jonah got up there and looked at him. He knew good and well. Jonah knew good and well that it was his fault. All that trouble. Boy, you talk about an awful feeling. You talk about an awful feeling. When you're not right with God, you're doing something wrong, and then bad stuff happens in the family, and deep down inside you know it's your fault. That's rough. That's right. And about that time, the Lord said, Hey, Moby Dick comes swimming by. <laughs> Son, that thing was long, that was long, longer than this building right here, and it was a whale. I had this little smart aleck. One time I was preaching that story about Jonah and the whale. And this little guy in Texas thought he knew everything because he went to Bible school for two years. And he came up to me and he said, uh, well, I just want you to know, preacher, that uh, it doesn't say it was a whale. It said it was a great fish. And tried to correct me on that, you know, and everything. Which, uh, Listen, a whale is a great fish. Duh. Amen. Great in the Bible means big. Amen. It is a great fish. You say, no, a whale's a mammal. No, you just listen to science and quit reading your Bible. Anything that big swim around in the water is a fish. Amen. And I said, you ever read uh, Matthew 12, 40? And Matthew 12, 40, Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Case solved. It was a whale. I don't care if every scientist in the world said there wasn't no whales. It was a whale. You honestly really believe that a whale? Sure I do. I ain't no big deal. Brother. If God said Jonah swallowed a whale, I'd believe that. Look, if he's able to make a sea in the ocean and the universe and, and the whale saw with it, ain't got no problem with a whale swallow. There have been cases where a whale, they've found men inside whale's body before. 
They found it all purple and swelled up like they's in the Titanic. And uh, and they and it's and it's all out there like that, you know. And he's down there. He's, one man told me they said one time said, "Well, there's no way he could have lived for three days and three nights in that well." But that's impossible. One number one, it's impo- it's not impossible if God's at it. Yeah. Number two, it don't say he lived for three days and three nights. That's right. That's right. They're strong. I ain't got time to get into it. There's a strong case yeah. to be built that Jonah died yes, physically inside yeah. that well. Right. Well, he said that he went. He said he didn't leave him in hell, yep. out of the belly of hell. Well, he meant the well, yep. but he said hell. Right. You mean tell me you'd live in a well belly for three days and three nights before you prayed? On, you ain't that backslid, <laughs> son. I'd have been praying before I hit that blubber pool down inside there, wouldn't you? Yes, I'd have been, when they picked me up and started going, oh, one, oh, two, I said, oh, God, hey, three days before he prayed? Amen. Well, anyway, anyway, God said, turn. That well went up. 30 degrees north, well went like this. 18 degrees northeast, well went like that. Oh, oh, look, 85 degrees south, well went like that. About that time Jonah comes flying out of there, He's about, he's out like this. He's swimming around, dog paddling, and he can't hardly get out. He thinks, oh, God, oh, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, this is it, this is it, this is it. And God said, you hungry? And that whale said, I sure am. Yeah. Man, I'd like to have me a good mess of man. <laughs> Been down to man camp a long time, got me some man, hush puppy, french fried, yeah. put some tartar sauce on there, and some ketchup, I, Man, I want something. And the Lord said, cut left just a little bit. And he went down a little bit. He started swimming that way. And he said, ah, there he is. And he saw them legs a dangling like that right there. And the whale went, ah, yeah. And you're going to go whoop, right down in his mouth. And he slide like he's on a water slide down them guts and into the, oh, Lord. I'm telling you, brother, and I, it got pitch black dark. He didn't know where he was at. And all of a sudden, psh, have you ever spit up? I didn't say throw up. I said spit up. You know, when you sort of burp or something, that stuff, Lord, what in the world is that? Say like battery acid. That's what you do to cheesecake. Yeah, you're a sinner. You turn it into battery acid. No matter how good it tastes going in, that's what it tastes like when it comes up. Lord, have mercy. You can't stand that thing. Hey, can you imagine what's inside a whale belly? Son, he'd peel, he'd peel the paint off of that piano, uh, off that, the varnish off of that right there. And Jonah's in there and he's swimming around like that right there. Oh, God. And he's down in there like that. And the Lord said this. And Jonah, you know, he said, uh, 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 Thou hast brought up my life from destruction. Uh, da, 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 da. We got any time going all that. But anyway, after three days and three nights, Jonah said, Lord, salvation is of the Lord. I know it's all of you, God. I'm sorry. Lord, get me out of here. And the Lord said, hey. And the whale said, yes, sir. How you feeling? I'm sick as a dog. Don't you ever ask me to eat another backslid preacher. <laughs> nobody can stomach them. Ain't nobody can stomach a backslid preacher that ain't right with God. Amen. Listen, brother, when you make a whale puke, I know some make a whale puke. Yes, sir. You make a whale puke, you're pretty nasty. You know that? That's right. <laughs> That's awful. Now, some of y'all are looking at me like this ain't in the Bible. All this in the Bible ain't right. Yes. You got to know the Hebrew, but all of these little details are in the Bible. Yes. And you know something else? Everything that God ever told to do anything, done it, except one person, people, human beings. Yes. God told the rooster, crow. God told don- donkey, speak. Yes. God told the fish, swallow tax money. God told the whale, Swallow Jonah. There's only one creature on earth that's so dumb they won't obey God, and that's us. We is us, brother. We're the only one dumb enough to think we know better than God. I'm going to tell you, kids, you don't know better than God. You don't know better than God. You hear me? You don't know better than God. You say, but I think I love him. You don't know better than God. You say, well, I, it feels good. You don't know better than God. Nobody knows better than God. So you said, all right. I'm, I'm sorry about that. He said, please, Lord, I'll obey you, but don't ask me to do this again. I, oh, I've never been so sick of I feel like I got the Wuhan flu. Oh, God, I can't got no taste or smell. Oh, no, no, I got this preacher in my gut. And the Lord said, all right, get rid of him. Turn this way. 
90 degrees that way. Turn right, got close to the beach. And the whale goes, back. <laughs> and when he does, out comes Jonah. Yep. This, is a little, this is a little plane for people at First Baptist. Because they're in denial, you know. They watch all kind of trash on TV, but can't stand the Bible like it is. Yeah. Anyway, here comes Jonah, and he rolls out on the beach. So I'm telling you, he didn't go, he didn't go down to the store and buy him a suit and tie. I don't think he probably didn't have his Bible with him. I mean, he, he, he took off 90 miles an hour. Bible said Nineveh was a great city, a three days journey, and God put him in overdrive and got him there in one day. What's up? And I'll do like a road runner. Across that there, he took off across there, 90 miles an hour. And he come into town and said, Get 40 days, and then it'll be overthrown. Now he said it in such a way, well, puke on him, seaweed wrapped around his neck. You ever smell old dead fish? That's what he smelled like. Dead fish, brother. I mean, well, puke. And boy, I'm telling you, like that. and buddy, them people got scared, and the king got up and said, All right, everybody going fast. Everybody's going to get right with God. Yeah. We're all going to get down and get right with God. The animal's going to fast. Ain't going to hurt you. You fast, your dog can fast. It ain't going to kill him. Yeah. Right, let the cats fast, the dogs fast. Ain't God spared them. I'm telling you, it took a fish ride yeah. to get Jonah right. Oh, By the time he got his degree from well, <laughs> he's ready to do what God wants him to do. Right. Yes, sir. What's it going to take to get you? What's it going to take you, y'all? You going to knock your brains out? It took bankruptcy for the prodigal son to get right. The prodigal son had it made. His daddy owned everything in the Ponderosa. He had a little Joe and Hoss and another guy. What was his name? Adam. All three of the boys on the Ponderosa. And they had this great big old farm. Had everything a person could want. And one day that younger son you the kids know what I'm talking about. It's always that youngest one. It's that youngest one that think they know everything. They're going to do it their way. Boy, they know better than everybody else. You know why? Because you was real hard on that person trying to get them to turn out right, and they did. And you let up on them last, and they're meaner than the devil. And grandma and grandpa finished them off. Come on. Well, the prodigal son come to his daddy one time. He said, Daddy. He said, Look, there's a salesman come by here the other day. And uh, he, I, he, he's showing me some stuff on his phone that I didn't even know there was such. He's talking about some place called the Far Country. And he said, uh, I think I'd like to go there. And his daddy said, no, nah, you know. He said, Daddy, there ain't, no, there ain't no girls around here. There ain't but three girls in this town. And every one of them's ugly as a mud fence. <laughs> I mean, that one, she's so much too, she could eat an apple through a chain link fence. He said she'd, she'd make a freight train take, take a back road. And his daddy said, now son, look, say anything. He said, I know daddy, but you ought to have seen these girls that he was showing me. I want to go down there. He said, that's a bad idea. But I ain't going to stop you. And he got his inheritance. He got everything that's coming to him. Yep. Ahead of time. First thing he did, went right down there to the camel lot and picked out a brand spanking new 2024 camel off the lot. I mean, Lord, that thing, I mean, it was a hybrid. It, it run off water and hay and electricity and put a battery in that thing. And what I'm telling you, he had the windows tinted in that thing, had the shades on, had them big, had them big tires, about 22 inches for hooves, put on that thing, shined them up, put armor all, all over the front of that thing, put a do-rag around, around that camel's neck, you know, that means I'll party. And boy, here he went, he took all his money, he come into town, everybody said, good night, who's that cool car, man, camel, man, cool camel, How would you take me, hop on, baby, this thing, and he hopped on that thing, they rode them girls around on that camel, they thought he was the coolest thing, he had parties over his apartment, he paid for everything, he bought the pizza, he bought the beer. He brought everything in. They all, I got drunk and had all kinds of props in. And I mean, boy, he lived it up. One day he went down to the bank. And he said, I need to make a withdrawal. We're going to have a big one this weekend. And the lady said, I'm sorry, sir. You don't have no money in the bank. He said, what? All that money? Well, you want to see your receipts here? I tell you, you spent $36,000 that weekend. 
That weekend, hey, you got that camel, you paid cash for it, $75,000, Bronco, and said, look at all this stuff you got here, and he didn't have no money. So he had to go get him a job, and he wound up feeding pigs for a living. Everybody listening to me? You may think you're so smart and you got it all figured out and you know more than your mom and daddy and you can know you know everything and all that, but you're gonna wind up out there somewhere on a street corner somewhere, wound up with nothing, and the devil will take everything you've got and leave you out there. Story goes, one day he got him a job feeding pigs. Eating pig slot, brother. Eating pig eating corn husk. And he got down there and thought, This is awful. Corn husk for breakfast. Corn husk for lunch. Corn husk for dinner. I ain't got nothing to drink but water. I'm, I'm about to die. About to die. And the light came on. And he said, I've got my father's house. There's people that work for my daddy that's living better than I am. I will arise and go to my father. It took bankruptcy. Listen, you think... You think, God wouldn't do that. He already did it. God wouldn't take everything I got, would he, preacher? Oh, yeah. He's already done it, some people. What's it going to take for you? I don't know who I'm preaching to here tonight, but I guarantee you, God put this on my heart. Somebody better get right. What's it going to take for God to get you right tonight? What's it going to take? It took a nervous breakdown for Nebuchadnezzar. There's your story. I used to tell all my kids these Bible stories when they were little. And I'm, I was all over the bedroom, just like I'm doing right now. I tried to preach like you're supposed to preach and everything. Wasn't doing too good. Yeah. I'd tell my kids Bible stories like I'm telling y'all tonight. And uh, so one night I got to preach somewhere. I was about 21, 22 years old. And I got up and just started telling Bible stories like I am now. And the old people come and say, that's the best preaching I've heard in my life. I learned something right there. <laughs> I learned something right there. Uh, <laughs> don't you know where Amos was a while ago? Uh, you got to keep it down. Boy. But anyway, he said, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he dreamed there's this great big old tree. Is that this voice? Big tree. Big one. Had limbs sticking out like that. Birds running strong. Big old limbs. That big around. And all of a sudden, somebody come down out of heaven. Said, cut it down. Brother, I'm watching the angel. Somebody got a chainsaw. They cranked that thing up. That thing. They said, now leave a stump. I ain't completely done with it. And let the tree fall over and wilt. And old king woke up and he said, ooh, that's a weird, that means something. That's a weird dream. That means something. Well, you know the story. Daniel got called in there and you know the Chaldeans couldn't do it. and They couldn't interpret it. So Daniel come in and he said, uh, what you need, King? He said, you're going to have to help me with this. He said, I dreamed about this big tree and it got cut down. Tell me the meaning. He said, you want the truth or you want me to fool around like, a, like this and say, now, now, King, I don't really have an opinion on that. And, and, and now, King, now, I'm not really called a judge. Now, now y'all are not nice. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, you bunch of rats in here tonight. Larry, I'm not called for that ministry. And they said, look, bud, heavy, heavy doesn't hang over your head. <laughs> You've had it, son. That's all there are to it. He said, what? Couldn't you be able to put it a little bit? And I, yeah, Lord, get ready to cut you down. Yeah, he's got you. He's tired of fooling with you. You knew what was right, and you won't do it. God got you now, bud. He's gonna, you are that tree. And God's going to cut you down and you're going to eat grass like a cow out in the pasture. Yep. He said, Lord, I remember one thing about that boy got guts, I can tell you that. And he said, are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure you're going to get right or not. Yeah, well, I'll think about it. going back down. And he didn't get right. And he didn't get right. And that first night or two, Nebuchadnezzar couldn't sleep. And about a week later, he thought, man, reckon that's Ah, it's been a week, nothing ain't happened. It's been, been a month, now nothing ain't happened. It's been two months, now nothing ain't happened. Listen, listen to me. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is think just because God don't get you the very next day that you sin that he looked over it and let it go. 
That's a big mistake. The wheels of God's judgment grind slow, but they grind exceeding fine. Son, when they start, they ain't no... A year! A year went by. A whole year. You mean God didn't whip him? That's right. You say, well, I've done something wrong. I've done nothing bad happened to me. Not yet. He's already got it marked on the calendar when you're going to get it. Your day's coming. Oh, I don't believe in a mean God. I ain't talking about a mean God. I'm talking about mean people. I'm not about a holy God that has to judge mean people. You're the mean one, not God. So he walked out one day, and here he comes. He had all the ambassadors from other countries come to him all the time. He ruled Babylon. I can see him as he walks out in his royal apparel and his cupbearers coming with him and all the, the, the woke crowd that he had. Yeah. And there was Nancy Pelosi on one side. Here was Hillary over here on the other side. And yep. then here come poor old Joe. <laughs> oh, it's over here, Joe. Oh. There he was. You're judging. Dude, you're judging. Well, anyway, Joe was there somehow or another. And here he was. And Taylor Swift. And, and all of them. We'll talk more about her tomorrow. God willing, at 2 o'clock. Here she was. About that time, he walked out and said, This is the great Babylon that I have built. I'm the owner of the kingdom. I own everything. Look what I have done. Big mistake. Big mistake. When you get this attitude, preachers, I don't care. I don't care if you're the owner of a company. I don't care if you think you're the prettiest girl in North Carolina. Somebody doesn't lie to you. She ain't here tonight. I'm telling you what, brother. Listen, people. Listen, you get to thinking I'm it. I'm big shot. I'm better than everybody else. You're getting ready to get your head knocked off. This is great Babylon that I have built. And the Lord said, all right, go get him. And about that time, that watcher come down and went, bam! And Nebuchadnezzar said, uh, we're going to have tea. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know it's that stuff he smoked last night. He's had a bad reaction. <laughs> they said, Lord, no, hey, there's something more than that. That's some kind of, what? He went crazy. Bible said he lost his mind, took a nervous breakdown. And, and the Bible said back then, <laughs> they, they didn't have places to put people like that back then. So they just turned him out to pastor. <laughs> his hair growed long like eagle's feathers. And his fingernail, you ever seen them feel? Like them girl basketball players, you seen them weirdos got fingernails out? How can you play basketball? Angel Reese and all them weirdo uh, thugs uh, down there, you know. I, they, they, they got fingernails. How can you play basketball with your fingernails that long? And Lord, they could, they could wipe that wall with their eyelashes standing right here. <laughs> Clean your windshield, well, spray a little Windex on it like that time to do. And, and, and that's, what, that's what Neb turned into. Yep. Yeah. And they just wrapped him up and closed him. I'd have been naked, I don't know. But they put a fence around the back of the palace and he's out there eating grass yep. like a cow. Yep. Right. Eating grass. Just chewing out there. King Nebuchadnezzar. Nasty old hair. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Now you got no great Hebrew. One day the Chaldeans come. One day the ambassadors from Egypt came. One day uh, the, the great uh, leaders from other countries came and they said, we have come to see King Nebuchadnezzar, please. And the guys up front say, well, uh, uh, he's not available right now. We have, uh, we have a, a Camilla, Camilla, or whatever her name is. Uh, she can talk to you. And uh, they said, no, we want to see the king. They said, well, uh, um, what about that, that girl that just does the press talks? Well, no, we demand to see the king. All right. You want to see the king? Can you hear you? Nebby, Nebby. Them guys over there. What are they doing, man? Come here. I 
about that time, son, something come around the house, teeth hanging out like that, old jagged teeth, hair down here, come around her. They went, dear God, what in the world? King Nebuchadnezzar. They said, what? King Nebuchadnezzar, that ain't, that's King Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah, he's, ah! I always picture him like that, like the lion on the Wizard of Oz. I picture him like that. Here. Put him up, put him up. That's why I always. <laughs> I thought you stand on one foot. Like, like that. That's why I always picture Nebuchadnezzar. But anyway, that's what he looked like. He, turned, he looked up there. They said, Dear God, that can't be King Nebuchadnezzar. He's the most famous politician in the world. They said, Well, it is. God warned him. He wouldn't listen. God had drove him crazy, lost his mind. You say, God wouldn't do that. He done did it. Yep. He'd do it to you too if you ain't careful. Right. Some of you don't watch out, he'd do it to you. That's right. Hey, 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 hey. They said, dear Lord, he's, he's right. And they said, oh no, he's, he's getting rich off of this. He's, he's in Twisted Sister and a rock band. Yeah. Back then they put you out the pastor. Now you get rich like, acting and looking like that. Yeah. yeah. So he got up, King said, uh, the king gonna rap. He said, I'm a rapper now. I'm a rapper now. My name is Nebby. I used to be king. My name is Nebby. My girlfriend Debbie. Well, hey, I, so I used to be cool. We jump in the pool. I used to be king, but I don't care. I love my nails and my long hair. <laughs> they said, we call that, and they said, it's art. Yeah. Well, they said, well, any fool act stupid like that. Oh, no, oh, no, he's coming out with a new album. Got you another verse. Right this. I used to be straight. I thought it was fun. But now I'm trans and got a man bun. <laughs> Don't preach to me about life and death. I'll smoke that weed and shoot that meth. Man asked me one time, preacher, he said, what do you think about a man bun? And I said, I don't know. It's like a girl with a beard, I reckon. I don't know. <laughs> girl with a beard, man with a bun, I reckon. I don't know. And they said, you're crazy. I'm getting out of here, man. That guy, he's, he's stupid. Yeah, he's ahead of his time. You wait till 2024, he can be on MTV with that. And finally one day, God looked down and said, hey, all right, time's up. And just like that, his mind come back. And he jumped up and said, shoo, God, I ain't had a bath in a year. Yeah. Ugh, such a so nasty, mad, nappy mess hanging out. I'm, out. I'm going to the barber shop. I'm going to take me about a two-hour share. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shave. I'm getting my Bible. I'm going to church this Sunday. And bless God, we're going to straighten up around here and give God the glory in heaven. I'm telling you, it took a nervous breakdown bring Nebuchadnezzar to God. What's it going to take you? But finally, I'll say this and I'm through. Y'all about had all the stories you can stand. Tonight. Seriously. Seriously. It took a funeral bring David to God. It took a funeral of his baby. I ain't, this ain't nothing to joke about, people. You know the story. David, a man after God's own heart that loved the Lord and, and the picture of Jesus Christ. And uh, there's a, I got it marked in my Bible, a little heart, all the way through First and Second Samuel, why God called him just over and over and over. He did things, and when he had a chance to cut uh, Saul's skirt off, and he did, and stuff like that. All those things like that show that he was a man after God with integrity, brother. But he got messed up. We all know that. David sinned. David had a man kill, stole his wife, and come into home and tried to cover it up. And we'll get it right. David, not a man in the world. Listen, the sure mercies of David are something God did for David in the Old Testament that nobody else got. Anybody else had done that, it was automatic murder. It was capital punishment. But God established a covenant with David, picture eternal security in the New Testament. 
the sure mercies of David. And God said, David, you're not going to get away with this. You're not going to get away with it. Hey, you ain't neither. You're not going to get away with it. Well, I've been doing this a long time. Just keep telling yourself that. You keep telling yourself that. You'll be looking through them bars or up at that nurse at the hospital or what's in that monitor, that heart monitor or see that EMS you laid under a car. It's coming. I don't believe God would do that. He's already done it. Yeah. What I'm saying is right. God has already done this stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. And the story went. You know the story. God forgive David. God put away his sin. Bathsheba had the baby. There was that precious little baby like that one there. Where'd, where'd it go? Somebody, that one here. That was my only heifer here for a little bit. <laughs> and it's out right now. I mean, we got another or two back yonder. How precious. Boy, back then people loved them babies. And David loved that baby. And the Bible said the Lord struck it. I don't believe God would do that. He already did. He done done it, buddy. I just can't believe a God and a God who would strike a little baby. Well, keep you can believe whatever you want to, but God did it. Amen. Your your view of God ain't right, buddy. You got a twisted view of God if you don't believe God. Did. He's already done it. Well, I don't like. It. Don't matter if you like it or not. I tell you what, you better do with God. You better quit trying to fight Him and start cooperating. You ain't gonna win. You're not gonna win. Line up, brother. I don't care what you have to give up. I don't care who you have to quit dating. I don't care what you have to quit doing. Line up. You ain't going to win this thing fighting against God. The Bible said the Lord struck him. And David went in there and laid on the floor and begged God, please, please let my baby live. Please let my baby live. God, don't let my baby die. God, please don't let my baby die. And he's a man after God's own heart and God didn't pay attention to one word he said. But if we really ask him, believe him, he'll hear us. Huh? Not when he done, done, decide to do something, he ain't. You can fool around, make him aggravated with you, and bring his judgment on you. And the Bible said, the Lord struck that child and he died. David's in there fasting for seven days, crying. They had a funeral. My little child. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Took a funeral to bring David to God. Listen, I've been preaching a long time now, people. I've seen a many a person that you couldn't get to come to church no matter what you did, no matter what you did, but I've seen them at the funeral home fall across the casket and say, Mama, I'm sorry. Mom, Daddy, I'm sorry. Mama, I'm sorry. Mama, I'm sorry. It took a funeral to bring David to God. Is that what it's going to take for you? God wouldn't do that. He done did it. You can't say he wouldn't do it. He's already done it. Anything God does in your life that makes you get right, he's done a favor for you. What's it going to take to bring you to God? You're going to be crying around a funeral, a casket somewhere at a funeral home? Brother Danny, would that, could that happen to my mom? Yeah. Could that happen to my husband? Yeah. You mean God, that could happen to my baby? Yeah, absolutely. You say, well, you're preaching Christ. You're like, no, I'm not. That could happen to one of my kids. It could happen to me. It could happen to you. You know, what our, you know what's wrong with this country tonight? We've lost our fear of God in this country anymore. We think you can just do anything you want to do. Good old God. He'll, he'll look. Uh-uh. God hates sin tonight as much as he did when he judged these people I've been preaching to you about tonight. What will it take to bring you to God? I want us to stand with our heads bowed. Count if you'll come up here just a second. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. She's going to play something very softly on the piano. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, I'd get out of my seat and I'd run down here, Daddy. 
Somebody will help you. Mama, somebody will help you. Teenager, let's do it. I know it's Friday night. It's just now 9 o'clock. It's just, we got time to do business with God right now. You get out of your seat and come. You get out of your seat and come on. Come on, Daddy, right now. Come on, come on. Let's go. Let's go right now. Now, what's it going to take? What will it take for you to get right with God? What's it going to take? What's it going to take? Come on, right now. Come on. Just get out of your seat and come. While we pray, while these are praying, come on. Amen. Amen. Come on, young people. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. Come on, church member. Come on, visitor. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not right with God. Come on, teenager. Let's go. That's what this is, the youth rally. You come on right now. She's playing softly. You let God speak to you right now. Let God speak to you right now. Others are coming. Others are coming. Others are coming. Now's your chance, buddy. Come on. Come on. Let's do business with God. Now's your chance. Don't wait till you're in a car wreck. Don't wait till you're in a, in a hospital somewhere. Don't wait till you're at the funeral home. Let's get right with God here tonight. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Others coming. Others are coming. Others are coming. Amen. Come on, girls. Come on, young people. Let's move. Let's move right now. Come on. Come on, girl. You ain't going to beat God. You ain't going to beat God. You ain't going to beat the Lord, people. You ain't going to beat the Lord. You ain't going to beat the Lord. Come on. Amen. Others are coming. All these girls, somebody pray with them. Amen. All these young people coming here, somebody pray with them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let's fill this altar up here tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Just say, dear Lord, I'm sorry. God, I'm, I get the message. Lord, I get the message. God, I hear you loud and clear. God, I hear you loud and clear. God, I want to do right. 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 God, I'm going to do right from now on. God, I want to do right from now on. Lord, I'm, ter- I'm turning. I'm turning from that junk. I'm turning from that crazy sin that I've committed. Hallelujah. I'm getting right with God here tonight. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Come on. Hey, what's it going to take? What will it take to bring you to God? What will it take to get your attention? What will it take to help you make just your heart where you need to get it. Amen, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Praise God, thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank God, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Some still praying. That's right, get it all right with God. Now you get it right with God. Amen, hallelujah. That's right, amen. Hey man, get it right. What'll it take? What's it gonna take to bring you to God? Oh, preacher, well, I don't want to believe in a God like that. The Bible said, Behold the goodness and severity of God. God is a God of love. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of love. God is a God that hates sin. Amen. He will not put his approval on sin. My sin, your sin, nobody's sin. Be sure, be sure your sin will find you out. God help us tonight. We'll wait just a few seconds. I still think there's a couple more that need to come. We're wait, waiting on you, friend. Get down here and get your heart right tonight. Come on. Get down here and get your heart right tonight. Get it right. I mean really right. I ain't talking about just part right. I'm not talking about just part right. All right, all right. Part right ain't right. Part right ain't right. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right tonight. We don't know if we got another day. Jesus could come back tonight. I wish he would. Are you ready? What'll it take? Bring you to God. All right, preacher, you come on. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that preaching, amen. Amen. Man, I'd have to agree 100% with everything I heard. What a tremendous message. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, it's better just to go ahead and let go and let God. There's nothing like serving the Lord. It's amazing how the flesh and temptation and pleasure... And things of the world can blind us to the goodness of God. I'd rather have the peace of God in my life. I've been on both sides of it. I've been that prodigal. I've been down in the far country. 
I've been on my face way away from the Father's house. And I'd rather be right with God and have the peace of God in my life than anything in this world. Young people, now's the time. Now's the time. You've got the whole world ahead of you. There's other people that love God. There's other teenagers that love God. Amen. Find you somebody that loves the Lord, that's plugging along, trying to struggle just like you are and serve God. There's people out there. God will put them in your path. You want to do right, God makes a way. Amen. Amen. So I appreciate everybody being here tonight. Appreciate you being patient, listening to the young preachers, up and coming evangelists and pastors and lay preachers. Man, thank God we got some men coming up. A lot more of them in here too. Amen. So we get to hear more about that and more from them tomorrow. Don't forget, 9.30 in the morning, we're going to start our morning service. We'll go 9.30 to about lunchtime, and then we're going to feed everybody lunch uh, at the break. And then we'll just be breaking from uh, 12-ish to 2. We'll come back in at 2. We'll just hang around here. We'll come right back in after we eat at 2 and have our afternoon service. Amen. Amen. And so y'all be praying about that, but for tonight... We got hamburgers and hot dogs and whatever else they got fixed back there. We want everybody to hang around. I'd like to ask everybody, once we go in the fellowship hall, please stay out of here with any drinks, any food, anything. We'll cut these lights out. We can exit the sides of the fellowship hall and the back door to get to the parking lot. Once we go out of here, we'll just be gone, and we'll meet back here in the morning. Preacher, can I say one thing? Yes. I'm sorry. I, I didn't get a chance to tell our kids, y'all bring everything tomorrow morning uh, from wherever you're staying, bring it tomorrow morning because we're not going back. I, I mean, at church, we're not even going home. And about the signs, we, we got street preaching signs back there and bumper stickers. Everybody ought to have a bumper sticker. I don't get paid for this. We lose money for it. But one of you guys, one, DJ, one of y'all go back there, get you a bumper sticker on your car. You can, we witnessed to thousands of people on the way down here today just by having a sticker on your car. Yep. That's right. Amen. Thousands. So he'll be back there, go ahead, and uh, get there. So you can put those street preaching signs on, nail them on trees around the curb where you live, witness to thousands of people every day. Yeah. Might as well. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to dismiss uh, and go ahead and ask the blessing on the food back there. Listen, hey, kids, don't be running back and forth in the fellowship hall. There's people, you make somebody fall, trip, you'll break your neck, and then... Lord help, we'll be in a tent having church. Somebody want to sue the church, take it from us, all that. Amen. Don't run around. If you want to run, ask your mom if you can go outside and play in the rain. Amen. But we're going to ask the Lord uh, to bless the food. Thank God for what we've seen and heard and felt tonight. Amen. Amen. And so let's, uh, let's bow our heads and, uh, and dismiss in prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's dismiss in prayer. Spencer, you dismiss in prayer, brother, and... Blessed food.